We've been talking a lot this morning about uh, both the dramatic reduction in poverty we've seen, but increasing concern about inequality within societies. From an economic perspective, how should we be thinking about this? We'll start with, uh, start with this. A rich person in India is much poorer than an average person in the United States or Europe. So if you start from that, and you know that growth has been much more rapid in China and India than it's been in the rich world, you know that on a global basis, there's been substantial convergence. And so if you measure inequality across all people, it has gotten much smaller. But that's because the poor places have grown faster than the rich places over the last generation. If you look within places, within uh, most uh, societies, um, those who are better off have done better than those who are worse off, and those at the top have done best. So in very round numbers for the United States, um, a, if the United States had the same income distribution today that it had in 1979, <coughs> top 1% of the population would have about a trillion dollars less or about $750,000 less per person. The 80th to the 99th percentile would have about the same as they do. And the bottom 80% would have about a trillion dollars more, which would be about 25% more per person, or about $8,000. Uh, that phenomenon is more pronounced in the United States, but through most of the industrialized world, the two phenomena of a pulling away of people at the very high end and a general increase in the return to skill is what one sees. And one sees some of that as well in many of uh, the developing uh, countries. The way that you have to have one way of thinking about all this, it would be that it used to be that if you wanted to combine smarts with work, they had to be right next to each other. And so when George Eastman had a great idea, which was photography, he got really rich, and Rochester was a thriving middle class city for two generations. And now, because of technology, you no longer need to have the same degree of proximity between the entrepreneurial function and the execution function. And so when Steve Jobs has a great idea, he gets very, very rich, and the employment he generates and the way in which it pulls people up is spread over the whole world in a way that makes a much smaller contribution that people are able to see. And so basically, because you can combine industrial world talent with developing world labor, it is good for superstars, and it is good for developing country labor. And the labor that used to benefit from being proximate to superstars is squeezed. And that's what, elected Donald, that's what elected Donald Trump, and that's the reason we see uh, more inequality.